So you have your bait and all your equipment. How are you going to use that? That's what we're going to talk about with basic technique and safety. Where are you going to go fish? Pretty much any place that there's water. You know, in, in the city, there's there's various locations. Here in Bloomington, we have Lake Griffey. Um, that's, that's just a, a, a mile or so from Indiana University. Uh, we have Lake Lemon. Uh, we have Yellowwood, which I would highly recommend people uh, explore. That's about 12 minutes uh, east of Bloomington. It's a state uh, forest. Very few people go there. It's, it's usually not crowded at all. Literally, for, for, for panfish, bluegill, there's a ton of places. You, your equipment you're going to use, you know, ultra lightweight, uh, two to six pound monofilament. Uh, we talked about the hooks. Uh, that's, that's all you, you really need. How you rig up the bait could not be simpler. This is what's referred to as a, as a vertical rig. Uh, you have your bobber. Uh, your line, a couple split shots if you need it, and uh, your your um, your hook and your worm. Uh, when do you use a split shot here? The idea is that you want to keep the bait down, and some baits float, and so to counteract that, you add a little bit of split shot, and it you'll you'll get that down. Your Effective depth depth here is down to about five or six feet. Anything after that, um, uh, deeper than that from where you've set your, your bobber uh, five feet above the hook, that becomes really, really, really hard to cast. And, well, in, f in fact, you, you really can't cast that. When I'm using a bobber, I'm probably only setting down to maybe three feet. It's, it's just easier to cast, and, and typically you just don't need to, to go that deep. If you do need to go deeper than that with the, uh, the bobber, there is a technique. We'll talk about that in, in uh, uh, Unit 2. Um, this is really one of the simplest and, honestly, the most effective rigs you can use with natural bait. It's, it's the wacky rig. You have a hook, and you have your bait. And that is it. No bobber, no weight, nothing between you and the fish. And this will give you the most natural presentation. The one disadvantage of this is you're not going to cast it very far. Um, 10 feet, 12 feet kind of depends on the weight of your your bait if you got a big old night crawler on there you can cast that a little further than you you could with you know red wigglers or or japanese beetles but usually the point is that you don't need to cast this very far you have found a uh, a submerged a downed tree that has fallen into the water and it has the branches sticking out this is an absolute wonderful place for for uh, fish to hold it is called cover and it's a place where young fish uh, small fish minnows can get in and get some protection away from larger predator fish remember fish eat fish despite the Disney movie and if you don't want to be eaten, you need to find some protection from larger fish that wants to eat you. And so any tight, tight cover that you can get into that the bigger fish can't get into is going to provide some safety. And that's the areas that you want to target because there's big fish out there looking for small fish to eat. And if you present them with a, uh, a nice big juicy nightcrawler, chances are really good they're going to eat the nightcrawler. Fish are uh, opportunity feeders. And so if you present them with a meal, chances are good they're going to take it. So the only thing we haven't covered so far is knots. How are you going to tie your hook onto your line? I would recommend an improved clinch knot. How do you tie this? It's actually pretty easy. This is one thing I am not going to attempt to do 
is to teach knot tying online. In fact, even in the classroom, I refer everyone to animatednots.com. It's a fantastic website. They have hundreds of different types of knots on there. Uh, they show you kind of, you know, it's, it's like stop motion animation, you know, step by step on how to tie uh, knots and I highly recommend that you 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 check them out. Grab a piece of uh, fishing line or you know a thread or you know a rope or something like that and and practice. Um, you can while away several hours, you know, practicing various knots. Well, okay, yeah. Well, I do probably. No one else does uh, but the improved clinch knot is one of the easiest knots one of the strongest knots and literally this is the only knot you ha you you need to know there's a ton of other knots out there this one works for virtually all situations so i would recommend you you give this a shot so let's get down to actually catching fish um, you've gone out, you found a body of water, which probably contains bluegill. Uh, you're, you've looked at places that might seem fishy. Okay, so how are, are we actually going to go about catching fish? Uh, you found a body of water. It probably has bluegill in it. Um, actually handling the, 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 the rod and the reel, just a, a couple, you know, kind of quick tips. Um, one of the first things I would recommend is, is don't make your cast very long. Um, I use what's called a fan pattern in casting where I might cast out, um, you know, eight feet or so away from me and, give it a few minutes there and then reel back in and then uh you know if we're if we think about you know the shoreline and a clock face you know i'll cast out you know to to the side at like maybe 10 o'clock um and and then you know again at 11 o'clock and 12 o'clock and one o'clock two o'clock and so on and so forth and, and just kind of moving you know in this case you know left to, to to right um you know eight to ten feet you know away from me and and then the next you know cast might be you know 15 18 feet away from me and then uh you go through that you know the, the fan pattern from from left to, to right and then you know the final cast you know really casting it out there and 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 covering you know uh, the, the water that way the idea here is that if you go out and you cast as far as you can throw uh, 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 throw your bait and you catch a fish and then you reel the fish in you have told every fish in that area that you're a fisherman and you're out there to catch them and you can spook uh, you know some very very nice fish uh, that way so if you use this fan pattern casting short then long you you don't go over the same water uh, unnecessarily and I, I found it to be very effective um, kind of the the one of the rules, so to speak, of, of fishing technique is to keep a tight line. If you have a lot of slack in your line, you're going to miss fish. Because when, when fish take the bait, you need to, to set that hook. Or if you're using circle hooks, you, you, you need the, the, the tight line you know, for the hook to, to actually engage. Um, keep your rod tip pointed at your bait. That's kind of another so-called rule um, that removes slack line and so if you're keeping this nice tight line between your reel and that hook you're going to get more uh, uh, more hookups um, patience is kind of what fishing is all about and we talked about the bobber you know when the bobber you know this is a technique that you'll you'll, you'll figure out uh, often don't 
do anything when that bobber first moves because the very often a fish will come up and and, and kind of you know sample the the, the bait uh, so to speak um, when you see that bobber going underwater vigorously and or moving horizontally across the water because sometimes fish will will, will pick up a bait and and they'll, they'll just move sideways um, and you'll see your your bobber you know moving that would be a good time to set the hook this is a, a touchy feely type thing i mean there there is a technique you, you just need a, a little bit of practice uh, with this and it, it, it's not hard you'll, you'll you'll figure it out landing a, a, a fish you've you've set the hook and now you've got fish fish on depending on the type of fish bluegill are very hardy very robust fish um, don't just kind of winch them in you know like you you would a you know dead tuna um, play the fish a little bit you know don't you you can overpower the fish and, and just pull them in. That kind of takes the fun out of it, I think. That's why I really, really like bluegill, you know, because they, they, they just put up a, a tremendous fight. And if you're using light tackle, that kind of enhances that fight. And there's also this possibility that the fish is going to break off. So there, there's this, this tension, this, this tug of war between you and the fish. If you pull too hard, you're going to break the fish off and the fish is going to escape. At the same time, you don't want to play the fish to total exhaustion. And bluegill, I've never exhausted a bluegill. I, they're the energi energizer bunny. I don't think you can exhaust a bluegill. Uh, bass very easy to do um they they'll put up a great fight for for uh, you know a, a, a short period of time but then they they'll become exhausted and, and literally you 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 just winch them in you've got the fish you've brought it into shore uh Let's say a bluegill, for example, they're a very light fish. You can just lift them up out of the water, and now you've got to get the fish off the hook. I was at a at a, a boys' camp um, helping out as a um, as a volunteer, and the 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 staff at the boys' camp were were young folks like you like yourself, uh, high school, uh, college age, and. Their task was to help these young campers who were probably 8 to 12 year olds fish. And it was very educational uh, for me because I would see these, these, these young kids uh, uh, catch a bluegill. They were using very simple, you know, spin cast outfits, um, uh, hook, bobber, worms. And they would catch a fish, and they would reel it in. They were really, really excited. You could just see you know, their faces were just glowing. And, but then they wouldn't know what to do with it. And then the counselors came over and to help them. And honestly, the counselors didn't know what to do because nobody had ever taught them. You know, some of these counselors had never fished before, yet they're supposed to help these other, these younger kids fish. And the thing that they were really missing was how to handle the fish, which once you, you catch it, it was, well, okay, it was entertaining to watch. Um, and, and I finally stepped in and, and, and offered some, some assistance. And, and what I taught them was that, you know, when you've got a, you know, squirming, flopping, flapping bluegill on the end of the line, uh, take your, your index finger and your, your thumb and and encircle the fishing line and then run that down to the 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 head of the fish and what you want to do is depress those dorsal fins if you if you remember all of the way back we talked about the hard dorsal and the soft dorsal well bluegill have these and those hard dorsals hurt 
and if the, the as a natural defense the the bluegill is flaring those that dorsal fin those those hard uh, uh, splines trying to to stick you trying to protect itself and so what you need to do is is compress those with your hand and so by encircling the fishing line and running your hand down to the head and then letting your hand push the hard spline dorsal fins down the fish is not going to stick you and once i showed them this technique they they did very very well um is because you have total con complete control over the fish it's not going to be flopping all over the place uh, and he's they're they're not going to, to stick you and then you can pull out your forceps and grab the shank of the hook and give it a, a, a gentle little twist and and release the the barb of the hook and boom you're done uh, you can either keep the fish or, or throw them back so anyway, that's a, a real simple way of how to to handle a, a bluegill and, and release them. Uh, the bluegill's happy, you're happy, and uh, you can um, bait up and go again. So do you always need to release the fish? Uh, practicing catch and release fishing? No, not at all. Um, fish is really good for you. You know, there, there's a ton of, of uh, uh, nutrients in there. You know, the omega three acids, so on and so forth. It's recommended that that we eat more fish. If you want to do this, this is entirely up to you. Some things to keep in mind: if you are out fishing and you hook a fish um, deeply down into the esophagus or sometimes in, in into the gill areas and you bleed the fish, you don't want to put them back. Um, those are now for consumption. Either you take it home and eat it or, you know, give it a, a, a quick... Uh, uh, toss up into the bushes and you know a coon or a coyote or somebody will come around that that evening and uh, and and eat them you don't want to put a, a dying fish back into the water because that can kind of kind of screw up the um, if, if hundreds of people did that you know every day there'd be a whole bunch of dead fish in the water and that's that's not cool uh, if you uh, uh, want to eat them there there's a couple websites um, on there oh also um playing fish uh here's a youtube um that you can uh check out on your own i'm sorry that with the videos <laughs> unlike the powerpoint presentations these are not active links anymore so unfortunately you're going to have to to i don't know maybe i could put those into the the uh, the notes I might do that anyway here's a, a couple good videos on uh, plane fish and and landing fish um, if you're into it here's something else uh, for largemouth bass people have this 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 habit of of holding largemouth bass horizontally or trying to you know by by grasping their their lower jaw right here and this is really really not good for the fish and you you can cause a, a jaw injury and and this this will lead to to mortality um largemouth bass bluegill things like that can be held vertically not a problem whenever we get into other species uh, later in the semester we don't do that but we'll, we'll point that out so um just you know, if you're a big largemouth bass fisherman, um, please please don't do this to to the largemouth bass. Uh, hold them uh, vertically, um, dehook them, admire them, take a picture of them, and release them as as quickly as, as you can. If you're into eating fish, which I encourage you to do, you need to keep them cool after the catch. Um, some people will use a live well if you're if you're in a boat uh, if you're uh, uh, bank fishing you can use a stringer and and keep the, the fish alive uh, one caveat with using a stringer and bluegill 
is that don't be terribly surprised that when you pull the stringer up out of the water that you have a couple snakes hanging on to your fish. <laughs> I know that is totally incredibly creepy. Um, people are squirming in their seats right now. I can just see it. But, um, uh, you know, there's, there's water snakes and they eat fish. And if you have, um, you know, half a dozen bluegill on a on a stringer you know hanging out in the water that's an easy meal for them and um, i've heard people um, have found turtles into their stringer uh, i mean this doesn't happen every day but but it's it's it, it makes for an interesting uh, uh, outing some people will carry the five gallon bucket uh, maybe throw some uh, bag of ice in there whenever you leave and then then add the bluegill on top of that should you dispatch your fish that you're going to to keep? Um, that's kind of a, a personal thing. A lot of people will will advocate the use of a preacher, and that's uh, just a, a, a short piece of wood, like a, a hammer handle, that you can you know whap the fish in the uh, uh, in, in the head and and you know stun or cause death uh, right there. Um, other people don't. It's I, I, I don't think there's a, a, a clear ruling on that. The idea is just don't let that, the, that, that fish spoil. Cleaning fish, you can either fillet fish or, or gut a fish. I haven't gutted a fish in 40 years. I discovered flaying when I was in, in high school, and I never looked back. Uh, it's, it's so much quicker, easier, less fuss, less mess. Um, and, and honestly, I, I don't like bones. Um, some people advocate that you cook the entire fish with the bones, and the bones add flavor to the fish. Yeah, okay, fine, um, whatever. Um, there are some websites here, and again, <laughs> they're not, not active on video, on ways of, um, of cleaning and preparing the various species of fish. <clears throat> My favorite, you know, bluegill, really simple. Go out, catch a mesh, uh, mess of uh, bluegill. Uh, I usually don't use ice or anything because I'm not out that long. Bring them home and clean them right away. Don't put this off. I mean, you've cut fresh fish. You need to clean fresh fish. And one of the big advantages of flaying is that you don't have to mess with the scales. If you're gutting a fish and eating them with the skin on, you've got to take the scales off. To descale a fish, you need to be outside. Um, some recreation areas will actually have a fish cleaning uh, area, and that's the place to do this. If you're in an apartment or, 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 or a home, scaling fish indoors is frowned upon because those scales can go just absolutely everywhere. That's why I fillet fish, and you, you'll need a good sharp knife and good technique. Uh, it's not hard. You, you, you just, you know, after the first dozen fish, you'll, you'll have this down, down pat. After you've you've harvested the the, the, the nice sweet fillets, um, I, I just mix up a, a real simple batter with with you know flour, salt and pepper. You can throw paprika in there if you if you want, and and just dredge the 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 fillets through the, the flour so there's there's a light coating on there, and then a cast iron skillet with a little bit of uh, either vegetable oil or, or olive oil, which technically is a vegetable and just cook them over medium heat you know until golden brown usually you know three minutes uh, uh, per side a uh, little bit of lemon on there and you are eating good our next unit will be safety and I'm going to do that later thank god I got through this thing except I'm gonna have to it's gonna be an edit from hell